in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed a Christian will always reference his action to scripture because that is the basis. There must be a scriptural basis for what you are doing. Okay, why are you rejoicing in spite of the fact that you just lost a loved one? You just lost a job. It looked like things are not working. Your health is being challenged. And then you now give me certain scriptures like rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Scripture number two, count it all joy, brethren, when you go through diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces patience. Are you seeing now? The believer should always defend his state at any given time and at every given point with respect to what is written and what God has said. Hallelujah. You do not have a child till now and yet you are rejoicing and even buying baby clothes. What gives you that confidence? Then you take us to Genesis 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had spoken and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. He visited Sarah as he had said. God has said it so I know he will visit me. That becomes the basis of your confidence. The difference between foolishness and faith is that faith is based on what God said. Because based on action, they all look the same. Are we together now? How do you walk around Jericho seven times to bring a fence down? If you see your relative walking around your backyard seven times, would you call a doctor? Now imagine a whole army. And then they are blowing trumpets and walking around. I'm sure the people in Jericho said, who oh, that will we'll never end. You mean these guys have been so insulted by God like this? Only for the seventh shout and that fence collapsed. Because the jealousy of God is behind everything he says. It always looks like it will not happen till it happens. Are we together? So why do you think you will not be poor? I'm hardworking. I graduated with first class. That is a good reason but not good enough. If the world you were living in was a kind world where meritocracy will have its cause at all times, then you can give that as a reason. But the Bible says, now we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. That someone will look at you just for the color of your skin or where you come from or a vendetta between him and somebody you once knew and you were connected to will decide to punish you transgenerationally. What then becomes the basis of your confidence? You are in an office that you are the only Christian out of many Muslims. What gives you room to believe that you will even rise to a managerial level? Now you tell me that Daniel in Babylon was exalted and he reigned through the dispensation of three or four kings. You are speaking like a believer. Please everybody shout it, say it is written. I want you to enter your spirit, say it is written. Say God said. This must be your approach. The moment, the moment you want to stand true and stand confident, don't just stand on emotions. What makes you believe that 2023 will not be like 2022? Don't worry, we are still in August. You will be shocked that December will reach and it will still look like last year. And next year will still look like the year before. Your deciding factor is first this knowledge. I know what God has said. 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 There are many people claiming to be matured believers and yet they are completely ignorant. God does not play politics. He will not manipulate your way into this thing. This is the prescribed protocol. It starts with the knowledge 
of these promises. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The knowledge of the promises. Man of God, what gives you confidence that ministry will thrive in Lagos? What gives you confidence that the members that love you and come to you now will still be there after five years? Knowing that the heart of man is desperately wicked, what gives you the basis to believe that you will be consistent and to grow in ministry? In a world where people can say, become king over us today and say, crucify him tomorrow. Apostle, my church is located in a very good place. You have to be blind to not see it there. Unfortunately, that does not work with the world of men. Are you getting blessed? My dear sister, what gives you the basis of confidence that you will raise children that will be kings and queens and will serve God? I know my children are blessed. Yes, but what is your basis? I'm not an evil person. Where did they get that from? The question is, where did Cain get his attitude from? Are we together? Show me the scripture that you know that becomes the basis of your confidence that your children will be taught of the Lord and great will be their peace. Hallelujah. I hope you know that Judas was born by a woman. Is that true? I hope you know that wicked heathenistic kings were born by women and as at the time they were babies, you would never imagine they would grow to become such wicked people. The heart of men. It is a risk to live your life on cultural, sociological sentiments. You must get your life to line up on scripture. So back to the man of God I'm speaking to, that you know that in the name of Jesus, everything that you lay your hands to do is it prospers and that Jesus commissioned you as a man of God is that true yes he commissioned you John 15 16 you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit this becomes an anchor scripture I have been ordained and sent not to go and be a noisemaker, not to be, you know, a, a, a drop of water in the ocean, but to go and bear fruit. I expect to bear fruit in ministry. Hallelujah. If we pray and I say amen and you say amen and I say our prayer has been answered, what makes you believe what you said has been answered? Because you said amen? No. Amen does not answer prayers. Now, you get to scripture. The Bible says, and this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will, is that true? That he heareth us. Another confidence, Mark chapter 11 and 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, Believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them. This is what it means to be a believer. That your life is surrounded by the knowledge of scripture. You do not take action in ignorance. It will be a waste of time. Before you take action, okay, you've started your business for instance. And God has given you a big space and you are about to start. Sending a text to customers to say just to let you know that now your whole your 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 items food items can now be found in this store does not bring them no they can even send you text and say you mean it that thing you said you are now doing it congratulations and they will never come to buy anything from you do you know why because except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep rather than saying i have 50 people who assured me that they will patronize me that is a risk you, are, you want to give yourself high blood pressure for nothing you go to scripture and find out in the name of jesus christ what does the bible say as far as my excelling 
as far as all of these things are concerned and you start looking for scriptures the works of your hands are blessed what grace came upon Jesus that got a crowd from their homes and they came to meet him in the desert what grace came upon Noah's ark that the animals left the wilderness on their own volition do you know the stress Noah would have gone through calling the animals because their languages differ the same way the languages of your customer differ rather than just believing that they will come based on sentiment you will access that hear ye him anointing the grace that can rest upon a man and compel people from the highways and the byways and to bring them to patronize what God has given you there is a more superior approach that translates to victory do you believe what I'm sharing with you so the first key when you want to engage light is that you must press for knowledge the knowledge of the promises the knowledge of these spiritual blessings in heavenly places let's go to number two very quickly the second key very quickly is you must press to know the conditions you must press to know the conditions connected to the manifestation of the promises the conditions connected please write this down and do not forget the conditions connected to the manifestation of these blessings these promises every promise in scripture has a condition connected to it why does God put conditions to promises so that it will never look like he's forcing it on you conditions activate the power of your will so that you can choose to accept or choose to reject as many as received him that means not everybody will receive him and he will respect it you can choose to say Jesus I have listened to your salvation plan and as an act of my will I reject you he will respect you only that you will go to hell hallelujah do you know you can choose as an act of your will to end your life now by just standing in front of a running train and except by the intercession of someone you will die truly you decided there are people who decided that today I want to die and they really died and God was watching on the throne most people do not know the power of the will that God gave man at the expense of your eternal destiny he still left you to choose that with all that I've done for you you can choose to reject me there were two thieves on the on the cross remember one was a foolish thief the other one was a repentant remember the story now yes and for the one who opened and acknowledged that he was a sinner Jesus said today you will be with me in paradise you would think you would pity the other one because both of them were dying anyway no the knowledge of the conditions please say conditions the knowledge of the conditions there are conditions connected to every scriptural blessing there are conditions connected to every scriptural blessing there are conditions connected to every scriptural blessing for instance you want to receive an anointing an impartation from a man of God there are conditions the condition is beyond just packaging a seed the biblical conditions for the transference of grace from one vessel to the other is number one honor number two service you see that now there are people who do not have any and yet they want impartations so because you are disturbing the man of God he will just lay his hands and say it is well but the man of God too knows that truly nothing left him to you hallelujah As a minister of the gospel, there are conditions that are connected to your rising and your excelling. It's a network of promises that make you excel in ministry. There is the place of diligence, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There is a place for relationships. He that desires friends must also show himself friendly. Is that true? Yes. There is a network of possibilities that turn you into a great minister of the gospel. But to every one of those blessings, there are conditions. There are conditions. There are conditions. 
there are conditions most believers know the promises but they ignore the conditions and they keep crying and say God till now and God says you will only have the readiness to judge all disobedience if and when your obedience is complete ten lepers meet Jesus on the way and then he looks at them and says go and show yourself to the priest and as they got up the Bible says while they went they saw that a miracle happened you see that but only one remembered that ah gratitude programs benevolence is sustains kindness let me come back and say thank you and he came back and met Jesus the Bible said Jesus was passing you thought after that instruction he would go he was still there waiting and as soon as they came he said were they not ten of you where are the other nine meaning he expected something are we together now yes sir there are conditions conditions connected you want God to favor you there are conditions to favor people just say that favor is unmerited that's not entirely true I've proven it again and I've shown you from Scripture Proverbs 13 15 good understanding procured favor but the way of the transgressors is hard it takes good understanding for you to have favor what is favor to command the desire of people compelling them to show you unusual kindness to grant you unusual access and to give you or show you unusual acceptance that is favor and it's not just about prayer alone there are principles that make for favor number one is that to the degree to which you are valuable you stand a greater chance to be in favor you see that now favor responds to value you can pray favor provoking prayers you can know and understand relationships and it can help enhance favor so there are many people who are saying I am favored I am favored they don't know anything about relationships they would drive every destiny helper from their life and yet they'll say God why is favor not locating me you've heard me give this example there are unbelievers who will travel from anywhere to anywhere to celebrate the birthday of a two-year-old son of a CEO somewhere let's be honest so is that baby the mate of that man he left his busy schedules and came and you see him play baby how are you is it is it really the baby he came to play with he understands that favor is relational that everything multiplies on the basis right there in that birthday ceremony the CEO will look at him and say by the way come that contract we're about to discuss you know we did not finish there and then whereas there's somebody shouting behind his house and saying God you must come through there are principles that make these promises become real. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There are many people who desire spiritual power, for instance, but their prayer lives down, fasting life down, are we together? Consecration down, diligence to get knowledge down, forget about genuine power, genuine authentic power, if these things are not there. These are the irrefutable keys if you desire power if you want an answer you must ask a question is that true yes. dr modok will say a question is a seed for an answer if you ask me a question then you are ready you are entitled to an answer i'm saying all of this so that you will ask yourself do i know these exceeding great and precious promises and if you do have i found out listen the responsibility component in your christian work must never be ignored what has god said to do to commit him you must know it there are two kinds of knowledge the knowledge of the promises and the knowledge of the conditions the knowledge of the promises and the knowledge of the conditions the knowledge of the promises the blessings and the knowledge of the conditions if they obey and serve me they will spend their years in prosperity their days in prosperity their years in pleasure you cannot want prosperity and pleasure from God's standpoint and then you are unwilling to obey him and to serve him no 
the Bible says I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord you are not living to declare the works of the Lord you are not a worker in church you are not participating in any pro kingdom activity you are putting yourself at risk already hallelujah honor your father and your mother in the Lord that your days may be long and it shall be well with you you have dishonored everybody around you from pastor to parents and you say in Jesus name I would not die you are joking you, you see what we keep doing in church we quote scriptures and disobey the conditions no 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 there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth don't expect increase if you do not scatter there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty are we together now when I found this it was a missing link in my life and it, it changed my life completely every time I study scripture I don't just study to know the blessing or the promises I also study to find out the condition add this to your study of scripture and you will watch your life change so that when you are praying now most of the prayer is not God when are you going to is it that we are is it that you don't like me just tell me let me know that uh, you did not die for me and, you know all those things we say in the place of prayer of course God is compassionate but I am telling you from a standpoint of intelligence there is always something to do to commit God there is always something to do to commit God I repeat there is always something to do to commit God wise people always ask God what to do not just will he do it he will but what do I need to do good master what do I do to inherit eternal life connecting the promises and their manifestation is that the knowledge of that instruction what do I need to do Jericho can come down but whether it will come down or not depends on your ability to hear the condition connected to that victory defeating Jericho is true whether Jericho you are defeated by Jericho or not it does not matter the most important thing is that if you want to command victory over Jericho then you must hear from God and know how to walk around seven times you want to cross the Red Sea that possibility is there but you must know how to take the risk I hope you know Bible history tells us that it's not that the, the river just parted and they started walking they had to start walking by faith for the river to imagine if you are the first person <laughs> it's easy to be somewhere in the crowd hey let's go but the first person there like you are the first person to break out of certain things in your family now but you must learn how to walk it's easier to pass through the Red Sea at least you can swim what of walking on water if it be thou bid me come and they said come and Peter got up hallelujah those who know this are the ones whose lives become an unending wonder you will literally see their lives as living epistles and it will be as though God isolated them and just decided to bless them oh when God you know when it was time for God to move me to Abuja I went to God to pray because I know that as far as dominion territorial dominion and the manifestation of the Word of God is concerned I know that God does not fail his word is true whether it will work or not depends on my knowledge of what he has said did he not say everywhere the soles of your feet treads upon that I have given it unto you is that true yes. but he says I have given you this land he now said begin to possess it that means I must know the dynamics of possessing territories God has given it to you look at how God was sharing lands for people with giants still there you this is your own and he was acting as if there were no giants okay there are giants here but you for this tribe this is your own portion what you would do with the giants to 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 to, 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 to you know are, are we together now it is up to you to go back to him again and say God you are the one who gave me you were aware that there were giants what should I do now with these giants most people are aware of the instruction i mean the the provision and then we start running and you get there and find the giant and say come we're waiting for you 
and we stand there to say god this is unfair how do you send me to a land flowing with milk and honey with the anakims there these were beasts with six fingers and six toes joshua and caleb said let us go up as once we are well able the same god who gives you the who tells you about what to do can empower you to walk in that instruction hallelujah something you are yet to do is why you are where you are something you are yet to do is why you are where you are please find a way of believing that i'm not playing games with you something you are yet to do is why you are where you are for some of you the something that is left is for you to sing praises and roll before God before the miracle happens for some of you the something that is left for you to do is to thank God for what he has done so far while trusting him for the one he's yet to do something you are yet to do for some of you you need to take a seed by faith and with understanding and engage it and say the seed bruises the head of the serpent there is something you are yet to do for some of you, you are yet to study to show yourself approved. For some of you, you are yet to contend for higher levels of impartation. But by all means, ladies and gentlemen, settle it and know this for a fact, that something you are yet to do is why you are where you are. This is something I had to tell myself and to take responsibility by the Spirit. Is God helping someone? And is God challenging someone? What is number three? So number one, the knowledge of the promises, the spiritual blessings. Number two, the knowledge of the conditions that commit God on your behalf. Are you ready for number three? Number three, the faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. The faith to engage the promises so that they be deliver. Isaiah 1 19. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. If ye be willing, look at this disturbing scripture. He never said, Go and eat the good of the land. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, that is one word that describes faith. If ye be willing and obedient, it says, ye shall eat the good of the land. Every land has good, but whether the portion will come to you or not depends on your willingness and your obedience. Faith to engage the promises so that they deliver. We consider Job 36 and verse 11, remember, if they obey and serve him, that is the condition connected to spending your years in prosperity, your days in pleasure, if they obey and serve him. Hallelujah. If I bring a package here, maybe some meal in a leather, and I say the condition to receive it here is by... 12:20 on the dot you run and come up stage here and pick it up the first thing you need is the knowledge that this is even aware that you the, the awareness that this is even there am i right then number two the knowledge of the conditions but you can know the condition and still sit down there and yet not get it out of this crowd the first person who will run in this example now assuming i'm holding it and once it is 12:20, somebody will be discussing the condition i know I am telling you, you just go around. In fact, there is a stairway. You climb up. And while he's discussing, somebody from nowhere will run and come and pick it up. And then you say, it's not fair. I know the blessing. I know the conditions. But you did not walk in keeping. I will only release it to the one who actually gets here physically. Not the one who talks about getting here. Are we together? Yes. Write this down, please. Obedience to God's word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform. I'll take it again. Obedience to God's word is the only way. Please, if you're writing on the line, only way. 
obedience to God's word is the only way to commit God's integrity to perform. You want to see God's power, his grace, his word manifest in your life, it will be at the instance of obedience. There's a statement that I wrote down here and I think it's important that we get. No amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience. No amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience. No amount of sacrifice will substitute for the place of obedience. Hallelujah. Till today, every time I have the opportunity to fellowship with the Lord and study scripture and in the place of prayer, I am asking him, Lord, what is the next level of my life? What is the next level of ministry? The moment he tells me, the next thing I ask him, thank him for that one and I say, Lord, what is the role I have to play? This is responsible Christianity. What is the role that I have to play? And God will say your own role is to make sure, for instance, serve the people with truth. Wake up and learn and study. I will not bring people to you and you will teach them nonsense and waste their time. I love you, but I love them too. You see that? So for as long as I obtain grace and I'm studying, I am partnering with God. You see, your faith is your partnership with God to make his promises good in your life. Obedience is your partnership with God to make his promises good in your life. There is nothing God cannot do. The only challenge is most believers are in ignorance, ignorance of his promises. They think God lied when he said it is finished. Or number two, ignorance of the conditions desired or required to engage those promises and then the grace and the faith to take actual steps. God can speak to you for instance you can be praying and say Lord what is the key to the next level of my life and God can tell you the key to the next level of your life is to open a business in the mainland and in the island that can be God's instruction and while he's saying it you may not have one naira to know that God has said this you go and now get scriptures everywhere the sole of your feet treads upon you see you have now positioned yourself with scriptures. Lord, what is the condition? How is this going to come? And you journey through scripture. How did people who have nothing, how did resources enter their hands? You go to look at Egypt. Egypt was broke for 430 years and in one day abundance entered their hand. How did that happen? What makes an empty hand to have plenty? Exodus 3.21 And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Now you know your next prayer point. Hallelujah. Yes. And then you know that relationships are the greatest platform for transferring anything from one person to the other. And then you begin to pray, Lord, this destiny help us in the name of Jesus. I am valuable, but the person to identify my value and to honor me like the wine presser, begin to bring them to my life. This is intelligent and responsible Christianity. And then you take a step of faith. You come around the mainland and at least try to identify a store. You go to the island, you identify a store and you say, Lord, I have found a place. I cannot take any step but just to let you know that I believe you enough. You will marvel and wonder at the miracle that will happen. Somebody will get up and say, I was sleeping yesterday and the Lord gave me an instruction that you are about to do a project. He said I should stop. When you come to testify in church, people look at you as if you are just stage managing it. But the truth is that those who know how how to walk by faith never are never bankrupt of testimonies 
we can spend all day and all night here and i will tell you miraculous things that god has done in my life and in the life of several people who have dared to believe him god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent God is showing someone in this conference the missing link that it is not as if God is unfaithful or unrighteous. No, no. It is that we have not understood the way we convert spiritual blessings. Forever I remain aware, you see that, that everything I desire to happen in my life is already finished in Christ. If it is not finished in Christ, there is no basis for asking for it. Because the only platform for your asking, especially for the New Testament believer, is Christ. Alongside that which he has done. There is nothing you cannot. There's no mountain. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not a man to stop you. Hallelujah. You believe this? That right where you are, it is in your prophetic destiny for God to give you a global visibility to lift you and take you to the nations but you have to believe that 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 reality is true in Christ forget about your current situation everybody started from somewhere yours is to believe him when you do the next thing is to find out what are the conditions connected what are the conditions connected Hallelujah. This is what I believed about myself even when I was in one room. When I read in scripture that I'll be exalted above all the nations of the earth, I believed him. I really did. I believed him. And I was not ashamed of my growth and my transition. I made up my mind that I believe him because God is not a man. I remember many, many years ago I was sitting somewhere in Zaria. I never entered a plane in my life. And I saw a plane passing. And I remember the Lord speaking to me. And said, many people enter the plane for many reasons. But my word will put you in that plane. It's true. This is not about flying. It's about what God can do. There is someone you are sitting down right now locked up with prophecies. God has told your parents they will not die till they see God lift you. And you are, you, are, you are interrupting what God has said because you have refused to believe him. There is a man of God here. God is telling you that this domain called Lagos, don't say there are plenty churches. It's none of your business. Yours is what God has said that he's doing with you. Hallelujah. I believe God. I do. I do. When I found the key, I began to practice responsible Christianity. God, you would do it. That's wonderful. But that is just consolation. Believe me. Hallelujah. The Lord told me something that he told Joshua. I remember three or four years ago, I was preparing for my birthday and the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me. And he said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. When he said that, I believed him. That today I will begin to magnify you before the nations. When he said that, I first received it and I prayed. And I said, Lord, you are able to lift. Show me what I need to do. Not, oh God, thank you, I know you will do it. And then you go around bragging and say, I know what God told me. And your life will be left in shame and disappointment. And people will say, this noise you have made now. And you will misrepresent God through pride in ignorance. Most people have brought reproach to themselves and to the name of the Lord. They come out and they shout, God said this. It's true, he said it. But if you do not know the conditions and you do not engage it by faith, you will marvel and wonder at the kind of disappointment that trails your life. Hallelujah. 
this man standing before you by the privilege of God's grace I have seen the hand of God I have stood before kings I have stood before heads of states I have stood before nobles like God said I don't say it to brag I'm inspiring someone God is too serious to play with you God is too serious to be joking and playing games it's just that most of us do not know that when God speaks he really means what he's saying hallelujah the performance is only for them that believe and act in faith them that believe and act in faith them that believe and act in faith there are many people today trusting God for financial resources for many things and if you tell them let me show you the pathway they will say no 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a serious person and, and yet the result is not there you see let me tell you if the result is not there just humble yourself and learn humility does not kill our world is full of a lot of arrogance in the midst of ignorance one thing you cannot disprove is results hallelujah you may have heard my testimony one time I was talking to a man and you know the man was in a serious situation economically and I was trying to lovingly just share with him to say sir would you consider approaching it this way this way this is what the word of God says and the man said no he said do you know what it means to take care of two children and I looked at him with compassion in my heart he said this man will kill himself for nothing and blame God see the person who is in a hole and someone who is outside watching is in a hole and he's not agreeing that I'm in a hole and you're saying I can help you out this is the state of many believers. I hope and I pray that those that are here seated are not part of those people. That when you hear his voice, you know. For someone as you are hearing me, that prophet in you is saying, this is the key. It's time to manifest that glory and that grace. That apostolic grace, that sign and wonder that God has ordained you to be. That kingdom financier, that captain of industry, it is true that his light can come and it can shine in darkness. It's up to you to argue it, explain it away, or believe it with childlike faith and watch the God of wonder arise and surprise you. As for me, I've made up my mind that this word must work in my life. And I'm about to prove to a generation by the Spirit that God is not a liar. It may take time but yours is to press in truth and watch the God of heaven surprise you in ways that you cannot imagine. I do not know any man who has been lifted by God who has ignored the knowledge of the promises of God. I do not know any man who has been lifted by God who has ignored understanding the conditions connected to divine promises to make them true in his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I sincerely sympathize with your pain and any setback you may be having in your life, but I submit to you by the authority of scripture. Wishing and attracting sympathy will only comfort you sociologically, but will not change that situation. One day ego beta is a mediocre consolation. It will not work that way. The secret to change is engaging light. For as long as you keep discussing darkness, this room is dark. I think we'll do something about it. Darkness remains there. The one, the one who does not even talk and yet is fixing a bulb and making sure he puts it on is the one who will have that room lit. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but upon a lamp stand so that it will give light to everybody in that place. You can engage light in every aspect of your life. The word of God is full of testimonies of men and women who engage this light. God spoke to them. They believed him. They found out the conditions attached. They engaged it with understanding. Can I tell you, when you see a man who is determined to follow this protocol of engaging the light, no matter what is not working in their lives, I am telling you, you just keep watching. You will watch with your own eyes the way they begin to triumph in experience from one level of victory to the other. Our fathers have taught us this. They have demonstrated it with their own lives. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
I remember I was one of, on one of my trips, I had the privilege to go to one of the redeemed campgrounds. And when I saw the vast campground that they bought, I said, my God, this scripture that wherever the sole of your feet treads upon, that thing is true. Whether it works for you or not is not an issue. You see, while you are there blaming God, there are people saying, thank you, Jesus, because the word is working. Are we together? Yes. If you buy a bottle of Coca-Cola or any of this drink and you try to use your teeth to open it and it's hurting you, you'll be blaming the company. You were not supposed to use your teeth to open it. Just because you don't know how, you see that you can hurt your teeth, even break your teeth and you are angry. What wicked people, how can they make this, this, uh, this top so hard like this? And you try and try and try. You see, if someone watches you, he will hate that company. Because you say, how can they be so wicked to package such a nice product that way? And then you will see a little boy come with something called an opener. Am I right on that? And just push it and then it's up. And you stand there. It's up to you to argue, well, it's just an exemption. Or to learn a lesson and say, next time, your teeth was not meant to be, that it worked once does not mean that's the way it works. God just showed you mercy and your teeth opened it once. One day you will try it and it's blood that will come out. You see that? But for the person who has an opener, you are not afraid of how many bottles you have to open. Because the opener does not get tired. The opener does not feel pain. This is how certain people have laid hold on eternal life. They have mastered the art of working with God. No matter what instruction he gives them, they know the formula already. Believe his promises, believe the conditions, engage by faith. Leave the rest to God. Just saying, God, you said it and I believe it honestly. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but it does not settle it. It is what he said that you believe you understand what he has said and the conditions to engage it then you obtain grace from god and walk in keeping obediently fulfilling the conditions that engage god now you can go to bed and watch the god of heaven arise for you apply this to any area of your life and watch this god visit you and surprise you this is what we have done with our lives with childlike faith and have continued to transit from one level of grace to the glory of God. And it is only the beginning of greater things to come. With this childlike faith, we have seen the sick healed. With this childlike faith, we have seen nations change. I told you about years ago when God gave me an instruction and said in the future, ministries will no longer have to sell CDs and the rest. I was in the place of prayer. And he said, because technology will, will grant access, a time will come when teachings and messages, information will literally be free online. This was many years ago. And he said, take your audios, put it online, and my angel will take it to the nations. This is how I will announce you. He was telling me that in one room, and with childlike faith, not knowing what the future looks like, seeing it today the other side of obedience look like you were just lucky there is no luck in it hallelujah and by that one instruction i don't know what would have happened to my life if i did not obey you see obedience to god's instruction does not carry the same value all the time there are certain instructions if you obey 20 years of your life is what will or disobey 20 years of your life is what will go for that disobedience believe me when i tell you hallelujah there are instructions that god is already giving me now for the future and for me my own is just to pray and say lord grant me the grace the grace to obey you to the latter the grace to obey you to the latter it's the same thing when god moved us to abuja getting there to say lord you are the one who has brought us what do you need to do do this do that you've heard my story god gave me an instruction by the map of abuja the map of nigeria the map of africa and the map of the world and pray on it that's it every night with childlike faith you come and see me looking like a herbalist father in the name of jesus who spoke and i believe if you are full of yourself, you will never obey God. You will. You need to become a child 
because there are times God will say drop your CV in your house on the ground lock your door and dance Lord I cannot dance that's the priest to God you are dancing you are, they are not you are not recording yourself to put on YouTube so I mean who who cares and you dance like a fool and in the midst of that God will say you did this to obey me I will see to it that you never have to cry again and you will see doors open hallelujah I remember when we got there I was at sent a few people to go and look for a place for us because with the visions that I saw I said which auditorium now would be able to contain this size of people in Abuja Abuja has always been home but where will you find except you build it by yourself but I do not know any rented facility that will be able to do that and where would it be in fact I, will, I remember we had sent we saw a place that they, they you know they called my attention to but the amount you will need to that's when you will know whether you you are really whether you are just talking all this thing or you love God and you know members are wonderful people may God help you your faith will work and we are backing you up in prayer but you are the, finally you are the one who who flogs it out until a miracle manifests I think I was in Enugu when when they had met the man initially he said no 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 pastors and churches destroy facilities and I'm not ready I said leave him just leave him. we know what to do was in Enugu true story the man was sleeping and when he said he had the voice of God and the Lord told him he said this people is a move is a prophetic move and the guy got up I went to go and greet him I was not even going to discuss the issue of venue just to go and greet him and say I'm meeting you for the first time there and there he called all the managers we sat down and we discussed the rest to God be the glory <laughs> hallelujah do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of you the world. Whatever he tells you he will make out of you, please believe him. If God tells you you will stand before presidents and kings and nations, do not look at your lowly estate. Believe him. Believe him. Are we together? Yes, sir. Believe him. Even if you don't believe him, ask him to help your own belief. It's more sincere than disobedience. It's better to say, Lord, I don't know if I have the faith to believe you. Many years ago, God granted me an instruction. He gave me an instruction and he said, one day I will send you. You've heard the story. And I would, he sent me and I went, I remember then to Canaan land. And it was an instruction with a seed, the kind of seed that you know that you are really obeying God. And I got up and went there. When I did what I had to do, the Lord asked me to place my hand on the ground there. And he said, son, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. Right now, God brought you here. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. We're about to pray. Get tired of your current situation and tell yourself no more excuses. Not after this conference. God, you are real. I'm not going to sit down and allow my life to keep mocking and misrepresenting you. You are the God of all grace. You are the God of all flesh. There are things that you have told me and I know that you do not lie. There are things that you have told me. And I know that you do not lie. There are things that you have told me. And I know that you do not lie. You told me in my lifetime I will see my children become great. Lord, I'm ready to see it. Anna the prophetess was in the temple. And God told her she would not die until she sees Jesus. She remained there until Jesus appeared. When he said, she said, ah, finally I've seen the consolation. Blessed is she that believes. 
for unto her there shall be a performance I remember when New Heritage Baptist Church was in the old building I had the privilege of seeing the faith walk that brought this church here faith believing God and taking one step to the other there is nobody who comes from nowhere it's a lie just because you are not aware when they were transiting does not mean they did not transit every king if it's David he came from a bush obedience transited him until he sat on the throne your throne is there waiting for you for some of you it's been there for a long time and God is saying when will you sit there as a king and a priest that you are there is a praise that your life should bring dear prophet of the living God when will you obey God to lift you so you start speaking his counsel to the nations dear man of God do you not know I was teaching our people that there are many destinies connected to your loins if you do not obey God to manifest you are not the only one who will suffer all the people who have been destined imagine the healing evangelists that should rise from their obedience you don't obey God there are many people who will go down the grave that should not be the will of God prophetic psalmists imagine the songs of worship that the body of Christ is still waiting for that should come from your believing God I'm not talking of special numbers I'm talking of songs like ladders in the spirit that can help men rise how about kingdom financiers there are some of you here you've been saying it forever one day i'll have resources and you are not committing god you are not doing the things that will make god to manifest on that wise you are not diligent you are not learning the laws that bring empowerment you've not taken time to study god's prophetic program it doesn't work that way the lord put this conference ladies and gentlemen so that we will be determined now you know your assignment is to go back and find the truths lord what have you said concerning my life what have you said concerning this vision i challenge you yesterday write the things that are not working in your life and let that be your project for the remaining part of this year make up your mind and say no excuses fail honorably but don't keep quiet do not be at ease in the midst of trouble do not be at ease in the midst of darkness believers don't operate that way even if you are in ignorance keep crawling your way forward hallelujah I made up my mind that everything God has in store for me that in my lifetime I will walk in it when I walk with God I don't factor Satan in the equation I I walk with God as if the devil does not exist Lord what are you saying because his empowerment is based on my disobedience and if I obey God he knows what to do with Satan do you believe this yes when the Lord spoke to me and said there is no nation you go to that will reject you I believed him it was up to me to believe him or to argue and say okay no problem oh God well I'm sure you walk out away no 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 I made up my mind as a man of God I said there has to be a way of doing ministry with integrity without manipulating people and doing all kind and playing games there has to be a way out of this thing are we together and I said Lord rather than argue it show me the way and the Lord told me there is a price to pay for authentic ministry it's not a gift it's a reward and I said, Lord, all I need is the grace to pay that price. And by his privilege, we are still paying that price. And look what God is able to do. Ladies and gentlemen, let me challenge you again. There is nothing God cannot do. Shake away unbelief. Because we are about to pray. Shake away unbelief. Lagos is too blessed for you to be crying every day. Please do not feel bad that I'm challenging you. You keep giving. There are people giving all kinds of excuses someone must challenge you to let you know that for as long as you keep giving these excuses 
you will keep justifying pain and mediocrity and failure the life we've been called into is a life of victory every land has good obedience is what fishes out your portion to give you when they said master we have toiled all night there was still fish in the river the fish just did not come to their boats god knows what it to tell the fish that will bring it from anywhere to anywhere from anywhere to anywhere apostle my own is that there are bills on my head right now i am in debt in a way that if god does not help me i might plunge into depression there is a way out go and study how god brought people out of financial situations in scripture every time people were in financial situations it's not business that brought them out it was the prophetic that brought them out alas master for it was borrowed he said where fell it by this time tomorrow the prophet prophesied restoration restoration is in the office of the prophetic not businessmen he can use that business go and borrow vessels and then sell it he, but let it be at the instance of the prophetic word apostle i've been looking for my land in lagos and it's not there it's not true your eyes has not seen it but it is there there is a portion for you the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all and that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. When it has to do with land and his blessings, there is no discrimination. The increase of the field is for all. The increase of the field is for all. Man of God, your membership are everywhere. Jesus said, all that you have given me, God gives men, men. He's the one who gives. I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture will be fulfilled there is a place for you in destiny there is an audience that have been designed to hear you and to honor god in your life yours is to believe god alone and with childlike faith that he continues to transit you you are not the first to, to desire visibility there are men who came out from their lowly estate without human manipulations i can tell you the man standing in front of you is a testament that when god places something upon your life there is nothing that can quench your darkness my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men Lord, I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to pray. I don't know what you have heard God say to you today, but I want you to make up your mind that from today, my life must change. My life must change financially. My life must change ministerially. My life must change. There has to be an auction from heaven. Go ahead and begin to pray. Please make sure you participate in this prayer session. We have about five minutes of intense prayer. It's a word and prayer conference. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard. The entrance of his word gives light and understanding unto the simple. Are you praying? Go ahead and pray. Alle Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are going to cry unto the Lord. This mountain where I have dwelt, I have stayed there too long. I have stayed there too long. I'm ready to move to the next level. Open your mouth and cry. Please cry. This mountain where I have dwelt is to have stayed there too long. Please open your mouth and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. 
Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Someone is praying spiritually. I have dwelt here too long. This level of my spiritual life, this level financially, this level in my career, let your light come and drive away every darkness. Pray for yourself. Pray for your children. Pray for your ministry. Someone who is angry at the dominion and the deception of darkness. Go ahead and begin to pray. The light shineth in the darkness. 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 Someone pray. It's time for the nations to hear your voice. It's time for kings to acknowledge the hand of God upon your life. Is someone praying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead and pray. It's time for the grace is placed upon your life to speak and to speak so evidently that the days of frustration come to an end. Engaging light for your victory. Engaging light for your triumph. Engaging light. Father, I am ascending, ascending heights in the spirit, ascending dimensions in destiny. The days of living in fear must come to an end. The days of living in uncertainty must come to an end. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Jesus pray in the name of Jesus pray hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that my portion my prophetic portion in life and destiny I declare that it comes to me open your mouth and pray your portion as far as God's program is concerned your portion as far as increase is concerned your portion as far as God's prophetic program is concerned in the name of Jesus Christ for your church to experience the mighty and marvelous hand of God. Pray. I'm in business with God. No death. 
no tragedy no up and down for the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day hallelujah 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 now out of the many kingdom principles that are available i want us to engage just one in prayer the bible says that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper number two that every tongue that rises up against you you will condemn he didn't say him you you will use your mouth to condemn therefore in the next two minutes i want you to open your mouth and dethrone anything that has taken the place of god threatening your life threatening your liberty please open your mouth and declare who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain at the shout of grace, grace. Pray the spirit of delay. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Retrogression. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. The powers that keep men down in Lagos, that keep men down in this region, I curse you by the God of heaven. The spirit that covers the glory of men, that they do not rise and shine. The Lord rebuke you. Go ahead and pray. Ah, pray, pray. It will give way. I assure you. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold must be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I feel stirred in my heart to give us one more prayer point. Hallelujah. Please hear me. There are some of you right now, you need the ministry of men like never before. John chapter 5, the tragedy of the man at Bethesda is that I have no man. You are in Lagos, but you are alone. You are in business but you are alone you need help but you are alone please if you have not prayed here pray seriously now you are going to open your mouth and declare lord who have you apportioned in this season to hold my hand and help me up i call them forth i call them forth i call them forth go ahead and pray it takes god in partnership with men someone be serious pray i call for help us help us sent by god help us sent by god endorse us sent by god lift us sent by god professionals sent by god Must be someone sent by God to help you, to 
to be used by God to wipe away your tears. Don't keep quiet. In August, not September, not September, this August, I decree and declare, I call upon heaven, may they show up, may they show up, may they show up, not September, not October, not November, not December, I call upon heaven, arise, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, help us, help us. Help us. Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of God. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We are wrapping up. In Acts chapter 12 the Bible says, Herod stretched his hand to vex certain Jews. And the Bible says they held a guy called James. And they beheaded James. And the believers kept quiet the angels that came to save Peter were there but because there was no demand from earth to heaven they were watching as they beheaded James and the Bible says keep that scripture Acts chapter 12 the Bible says they beheaded James the brother of John with the sword read verse 3 the Bible says verse 3 give it to us media and because he saw that it pleased the Jews and the church kept quiet, he proceeded further. This is what evil does when you keep quiet. It will first attack your health and you keep quiet. It proceeds further. Satan always starts at a point but he does not desire to remain there. No, he starts with your firstborn and you say, no, it's just teenagers behaving. He proceeds further. Anytime you keep quiet, he proceeds further. And then the Bible says, verse 5 now. Let's jump to verse 5. It says, Peter was kept in prison. But this time around, the church said, we'll not keep quiet again. He said, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. If they started that prayer when they held James, he would not have died. There are many things we are saying is the will of God and God is saying I have no hand in it. It is your refusal to pray and your refusal to comply. Can I give you one more prayer request? Lord, anything, every tragedy that has come to my life as a result of ignorance or evil, I command a sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. Go ahead and pray. Oh, I thought it was you walking. Now I see that it is the devil walking. And Lord, I demand by faith a sevenfold restoration. Restoration of my job. For losing my loved ones to ignorance. Lord, restore. Lord, restore. For losing my finances. Losing my business. Lord, restore. Restore, restore, oh God, until my life becomes consistent with your will.
declare restoration. The years that the kanka worm has eaten, the years the palma worm has eaten, the years the caterpillar has eaten, Lord restore, restore my joy, restore my fire, restore my spiritual life, restore the influence, the name you have given my family, Lord restore, restore, restore that mantle that you once placed upon my life that left through carelessness restore my spiritual life restore the gift of the spirit that was once at work in my life for in jesus mighty name we are praying in jesus mighty name we are praying hallelujah we have a final session this evening and if i were some of you except it is necessary if you stay far just find somewhere to camp around and be flogging it with destiny before evening you get a meal just something to refresh yourself and refuse and say lord tonight i am making it my not our night Tonight is my night that you place a demand. The Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight we're going to have time. I'll just show you one key and then we'll be praying. I'll minister to the sick and we'll be ministering the power of God. Age long captivities that have tied family members, that have tied people, or except except it is not of the devil but provided it is of the devil it must bow finally in the name of jesus christ and for some of you you may need to call your loved ones especially those who are within reach those who might be outside of the nation tell them to connect we know what we are going through tell them and say god has brought a solution they should connect the media can give the links of the church they you know the platforms and listen carefully and be prepared to receive and come with your prayer request don't say i've been writing prayer requests has it been answered if no write it again and come with faith tonight among the many things that will be happening is that god is going to be imparting graces for some of you these graces that were once working in your life that you lost as a result of prayerlessness or carelessness or wrong friends or wrong ministerial patterns god is going to be restoring authentic genuine graces Amen. hallelujah you have a loved one in the hospital come with their photos by uh, as a point of contact you are trusting god maybe some document if it's within your power and you can reach come with it and let something rest upon it for god's sake that you will return back and you will know that there is a God that sits in heaven. Hallelujah. And as you come tonight, I'd like you to see in the mind of your spirit, every luggage that has refused you from moving fast, that God is going to be losing that chain and it will fall off here tonight. Are we in agreement on this? So before the service even starts, you should be seated and already praying in the spirit. Lord, visit me. If you are a man of God, Father, it's time for my ministry to encounter genuine grace to rise. You are a business person, that spirit that has surrounded my business that will not give me visibility, it must give way today. Hallelujah. As for now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. As you begin to press for knowledge, as you begin to press to know the conditions connected to actualizing divine promises, and as you obtain grace to walk in faith and obedience, may you begin to see the wonders of God in your life. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, 
it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 